What's cooking, everyone? Welcome to the Night to the Kitchen Tables. I'm your host, Seth. And I'm Cal. And today we're bringing you a little bit different one. We're bringing some tips on how to play Commander on a budget. Right. So Commander can be kind of an expensive format. Kind of. Just a little bit. Uh, you got 100 cards in your deck. The bigger card count can add up to a bigger price tag. So mm. how do we get that down if you're trying to play on a budget? Especially when you go to like to LGS and stuff, most people's decks cost more than your car payment. It can be very intimidating. Yeah. Right, people drop these expensive cards and you're like, well, I just can't compete with that. Yes, you can, and we're going to show you how. All right, so first off, we have a couple key points here. Our favorite one is going to revolve around how to purchase your magic cards. Right. So number one, buy damaged or used cards. Yeah, no, that's the great best one. No matter where you buy your cards, most of the biggest card markets have an option to sort or filter mm -hmm. your cart by... I mean the quality or the um, yeah the condition of the card. The condition card of the Kingdom card. does it. TCG player does it. Yep. I think mo most places do. I even I, I even think Card Market does it. Probably yeah. So because yeah. you yeah. got a we got a really good deal on a doubling season recently, right? I got a great deal on a doubling season. Oh wait, that's for a different one. It's actually both. Both. Okay. It's both. But we'll, yeah, we'll cover that in the next one. But yeah, no, buy your cards at moderately played, heavily played, or even damaged. 90% yeah. of the time, if you buy a damaged card, it's not even that bad. No, I, and if it's you just throw in a card not. sleeve, it literally makes no difference. Yep. So, And you can find it for, I mean, even like a third of the market Sometimes. value price. Yeah. So yeah, there, I've picked up plenty of, I don't know, t 5 to $10 cards for just a yeah, couple for bucks. Yeah, a buck or two. Yeah. yeah. So definitely be on the lookout. They, uh, as, uh, as uh, our, our favorite podcaster says, they need a home too. They need a home too. <laughs> okay, that brings us to point number two. In the same kind of category, you can filter by language. So English tends to be the most expensive version of the card. Most Magic players are English speakers, meaning that foreign language, Spanish, French, German, Japanese, Chinese, are usually cheaper. So you can usually get a Chinese version or Japanese, German, whatever, version of a card for sometimes half to a third of the mm -hmm. price. And if you use those in conjunction together, that's what you were saying. That's how I got my doubling season for like a fourth of the price of what a normal one runs for is I got a damaged Chinese doubling season. So And it still doubles counters just as good as a near mint one does. Sure does. <laughs> and we, we both experienced with it. You go through my staple binder, I mean, probably 10% of them are, right. are foreign you language cards. You do have cards. to remember what that card is. Mm -hmm. um, what I usually do is I just kind of put a sticky note on it that explains it. Uh, just on the outside of the sleeve, so it doesn't put it on the card. It's yeah. not going to hurt the Or if you've got your card like an inner sleeve, you just slide it on there too. Right, put yeah, your, totally. Slip of paper, a sticky note, something You like just that. use a placeholder card yeah. in your deck, and you know what that, you just write on the card what that represents. That would really help your opponents, because it can be frustrating sometimes when you're playing against someone who is playing perfectly legal cards that just don't happen to be in English, but you're not familiar with every word on every card, so it is just be courteous to your opponents to render a good translation for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So right. nothing's more frustrating than making a misplay because someone doesn't have a card in the language you're familiar with. Right, you're like, oh wait, I forgot about that clause. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be that guy. So yeah, Definitely, so keep a lookout for damaged cards, foreign language cards. That's a great way, good best practices for when you're looking, yep. when you're in the market to buy more expensive cards. And you mentioned staple binder, which is point number three, so go ahead. Yeah, so it's it's a practice I like to employ. Here, I got it right here. This We call this the Elena binder. It's got Elena right there. I have it full of my staple cards that are more than a couple bucks yep. that go into several of my decks that I just don't have the budget to rebuy over and over and over. I would say the every best example of that, that most of our viewers would probably know, Lightning Greaves. Yep, got right. Lightning Greaves. Lightning yeah. Greaves goes in almost every single commander deck, and it's a $10 card. If you've got 10 commander decks, you don't want to buy 10 of those cards. That's $100 <laughs> it's a for big feel bad <laughs> card, right? You don't want to do that. So instead, you buy one copy, and then you put a placeholder in all of your decks, you got the fancy binder here. You got Lan Yelena holding on to your lightning greaves for you. So, yep. So, when you just get your card in your hand that has a sticky note on it, and I usually use like a token or something mm -hmm. uh, It just has lightning greaves on it with the pertinent information, quip costs, casting costs. Yep. And then when I play it, I slap it down to prove that I'm not like just 
pull the cards out of nowhere, right, put yeah. that card on the battlefield, and then show that I have the lightning greaves in the binder. So you might want to be careful with this. If you go to like an ev an event or something, they might not like that. Yeah. Talk to the judge at the event beforehand. Talk to your mm -hmm. play group. Make sure everybody's okay with it. Make this part of your rule zero conversation. Like just right. just give everyone a heads up in case anyone feels a little squeamish. I have yet to encounter anybody that is not okay with mm -hmm. it. But just be courteous. Just let them know what kind of game they're in. Commander's for. a casual format. It's important to be more courteous and care about the people you play with. So just talk to them about it beforehand. Yeah, exactly. All right, this is going to take us on to tip number four. Sometimes buying accessories for your deck can be really expensive. Like, why would I spend 10 bucks leaving up my commander deck when I can use that $10 to get a buy fancy another card. deck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or get another Lightning Greaves or something, right? Yep. To, to help to put something in my deck that's actually going to bring me value on the battlefield. So how do you protect your deck on a budget? Well, penny sleeves. Penny sleeves. <laughs> they, that is the number one. Seth, what do you, how do you feel about penny sleeves? I I hate penny sleeves. I don't like how they feel. I don't like how they shuffle. But they're really good on a budget, and I care about a budget. So you don't need to go out and pay $30 for sleeves when you can get penny sleeves for $1.99 at Walmart. You throw your cards in that, and your cards are protected almost just as good as if they were in $50 sleeves. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they still provide that nice sleeve shuffle. Right. So uh, I would recommend probably still putting your commander in a different sleeve so that we don't shuffle back in. But yep. put your, definitely put your 99 in the penny sleeves if you're on a budget. I have several commander decks that I just put in penny sleeves because I don't have the budget to sleeve them up in 10 to $15. Absolutely. If I have like expensive cards, so. and by expensive, I usually mean like more than $2, <laughs> yeah. um, I'll usually put it in an inner sleeve a perfect fit and then that inside the penny sleeve mm -hmm. just to kind of protect it i don't want to have to buy that two to ten dollar card again that's a feel bad so just protect that a little more once again that's up to you um, it's uh we're like definitely the kind of players that we don't double sleeve our whole deck we double sleeve like six of the cards in it yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. so that uh speaking of accessories it brings into deck boxes as well deck boxes can range they, they, they range all over the place. Oh, like you can get the fancy leather ones mm -hmm. with the dice trays and like the fold out magnetic slots. Those can be upwards of forty, fifty dollars. Yeah, but here at the Knights of the Kitchen Table, we are on a budget. So sometimes I don't even buy deck boxes. I just I'm on the lookout at all times in my everyday yeah. life for a box that looks like it fits a hundred sleep cards. <laughs> uh, my wife actually likes to buy like. Yeah. Uh, like eye glass cleaner wipes little wipes to clean your glasses with and the box those little wipes come in it's the perfect fit a really good commander deck i my uh yeah. tovalar werewolf tribal deck sits in a uh, a glasses cleaner also the, box right now if you do go to events if you do any like uh sealed product events pre-releases or whatever mm -hmm. those pre-release kits are the perfect size to yeah. fit a sleeved commander deck they're a little tight, but you can just you squeeze them right They're in there. They're a little tight, but yeah. it's cardboard. Got, cardboard bends. I've got like three commander decks in there. I have like a yep. golem tribal that I really like the Brothers War art on the pre-release kit box. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, got, I've my, seen uh, that one. got my deck in there right now. There um, are other options. You know, I mean, Amazon usually has some pretty good options for deck boxes. Dragon Shield has some pretty good options. If you want something a little better. If you do like the plastic hard shell, I recommend, here we got it right here, from Dragon Shield, we got this little... Uh, hard case, hard shell deck box. Uh, it's, yeah, local game store. Not a sponsor. Two and a half dollars, yet. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half bucks, local game store. You can uh, make sure your deck is nice and protected. Fits 100 uh, card sleeve with a little extra room for tokens and yep. extra sleeves in the back, so. But it's not necessary. That's, most of my decks are in those boxes. Right. They're good. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could spend a little bit more than a piece of cardboard to get these. There's no reason to spend fifty dollars on a fancy, genuine leather deck box. Unless you want to, that's perfectly fine. But on a budget, anything works. Yep. Next item is Popper Commander. Popper's awesome. It's yeah. a thriving community. It's a growing format in the Magic community, where it's just Commander on a budget. That's all it is. It's literally just made to be cheap. Yeah, I I run a a Orzov Life Gain Sacrifice. Yep. Uh, budget popper commander deck and yeah I, I play it with what does the whole deck list cost uh, I mean maybe ten dollars fifteen including shipping right <laughs> maybe, yeah. yeah I have a couple soul sisters in there actually so maybe a little bit more so maybe like but, fifteen bucks yeah so it's I mean it costs absolutely nothing and it's a ton of fun to play 
Uh, plus, you get yeah. a. You sh I don't even sleeve it. I just show up and just riffle shuffle this thing. <laughs> what a flex! <laughs> it's so much fun. You pull the the horror in people's eyes. <laughs> but rip, uh, rip the rubber bands off of it. So. Oh, it's hurting my soul just talking about <laughs> yeah. it. But no, for real. I mean, you got an entire commander deck that you paid less than fifteen dollars for, mm -hmm. and it's just as good as some of these decks that you pull up to an LGS. It performs just as well in competitive EDH. So, or casual EDH. Yeah. So check out the PEDH community. It's a it's a great thriving community. There's a lot of resources out there for you, and it also helps to solve the draft chaff problem. What do you do with all this oh, Magic: man. The Gathering bulk that you just collect? Anybody over the who's years? played Magic for more than a couple years has a big box sitting somewhere in their house of full of commons. PEDH gives you a use for all of those comments. I have loved just digging through yeah. just the chaff and finding unique little synergies. Yep. No, it's great. Common commander stuff. And you wouldn't even think about them half the time. Because you open a pack, you know, you see common, 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 common. You don't even look at them half the time. But if you're building PEDH, you're now actually, I'm paying you're thinking a lot closer that. attention. Yeah, you're paying attention. So, so check it out if that's something interest interests you. So uh, Next one is proxies. This is a big Time debate. To get controversial. Yeah, yeah, this is a big debate in the magic community. This one is totally up to you and your play group. This is something you're going to want to talk about with your play group, with the people you play with, at your local game store, at your kitchen table. See what they feel comfortable with, you know? Some people are of the opinion that there should be no proxies allowed. Absolutely not. And if you're playing with one of those people, you should respect their yeah, opinion. That's a valid. That's a valid. Um, other people say proxy the whole deck. You know, grab a printer, print off the whole deck, cut it out with scissors, and play like that. It, if that's your play group, more power to you. That's even cheaper for you. Um, this is not financial advice, obviously. It's totally up to you and your play group, but that's just a decision you got to make. Um, I think the secret key to it is moderation and quality. That's exactly I, what I think. I, yeah. I, I am totally fine with the proxies, but it does irritate me when I'm seeing, I'm looking across the board and I've got a bunch of cards with sticky notes on them or basic lands scribbled in with a Sharpie. <laughs> it makes it really hard right. to play Magic. And it really takes you out of the immersive experience of the game, which I really appreciate the art, the lore, the, the idea of being planeswalkers dueling with Magic spells. So make an extra effort, print off yeah. an actual card. You know, it's and I not can appreciate like a fun altar. You yeah, know, I thing love too. seeing somebody pull up with a their com favorite commander deck, and they've got their commander proxied into an altar of their favorite TV character, mm -hmm. Star Wars, you know, whatever. And it's that's awesome. I love seeing that. But once again, some people don't, and you have to respect that. Yep. And maybe do it in moderation as well. Proxying your whole deck can maybe ruffle some feathers, but maybe just right. two or three cards in the deck, it's it's going to go over a lot easier. Absolutely. So just take that into account if you do decide to proxy cards. Um, in that same vein, not necessarily proxies per se, but gold border MTG cards. MTG sponsored proxies. <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, th this has been a, a huge conversation recently with like the Magic 30th anniversary product. Yep. We have a lot more, even though those weren't technically gold bordered, but they run in the same vein as well. So yeah, gold bordered cards. Once again, talk to your play group. Mm -hmm. You know, see what they think. They're produced by Wizards of the Coast. Uh, people may look more favorably on them than just computer printed proxies. But it's it's a great way to get expensive staples at a discount price. Exactly. I have yep. a I run an ancient tomb that I got for like eighteen dollars I think. Well, well the card was actually like, like ninety dollar. Yeah, I think it was sixty at the time when I bought it, and I was like, I'll, I'll get a gold border just so they don't make it go over the easy when I slap that on ancient tomb right. in a in a more budget deck. Because there's but. if you're playing budget, which we are, there's no there's no world in which I'm gonna spend a hundred dollars on a piece of cardboard. <laughs> It's just not going to happen unless I happen to win the lottery. But yeah, Seth wins the lottery. He drops one hundred dollars on the magic card. There will be signs, First folks. First thing, <laughs> take note. <laughs> but yeah, talk to your group. I, I feel like most people are okay with it. Mm -hmm. All right, and our last tip here for today: take time to look for alternatives. Time can That's save a you money. Big one, yeah. And what we mean by that is use. You know, different databases online. There's a lot of them. Gatherer, Scryfall. Yeah. Just use those. Search key terms to find cards that fit into your deck. That expands beyond the list you'll find like an EDH rec. Right. Because you go on EDH rec, which is the staple, you know. If you don't know what that is, or, check it out. It's yeah. fantastic. It is the number one staple for building decks. It has 
multi checked multiple databases to check decks for different commanders. But you look at that, and most of the time, the cards that will show up happen to be the expensive ones. Because mm -hmm. they're just kind of more useful, they're better, they're more common. But you can usually find a budget replacement simply by typing the rules text of that card into one of these search engines and finding something that does the exact same thing for maybe one or two more mana. Mm -hmm. And it's usually like a fourth, fifth, sixth of the price. A classic example is replacing Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is the most common mono green win con I've probably ever seen. Right. But you replace that $30 card with Endray's Forerunners, which is basically the same thing. It's pretty similar. It's not. It's a little less overkill, but right. it gets the job done. Still pumps your creatures, gives, gives them trample, trample, and it goes from being games. a $30 card. Like what, 18 cents? I think yeah, it is, to like something like that. Yeah, quarter. less than a quarter. So, And you can just find that by like creatures you control, gain, trample, or, or look for different keywords in the card that you're trying to replace yep. in Scryful or Gatherer. And that can give you a good idea of what else is out there that can help save you money on effects you're looking for. And it's so rewarding, you know, to be able to pull off the exact same win con for less than a quarter. Pull out some secret tech that other people have right, seen. Yeah, and yeah. people are like, oh, what's that card? I've never seen this. You're <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, because it's cheap. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it helps reduce like the, ubi the ubiquity of decks. Like, yeah. your deck is not your, what's the deck you run? Your Bruvac deck isn't sure. gonna look like the player's Bruvac across the table. It'll have some unique cards in there that people haven't seen before. And that's kind of why we play Commander, is for the variety that yeah. it entails. The, uh, the deck building challenge they can help cultivate. So yep. uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but also EDA Trigger does have the option to sort cards uh, like through like a cheaper That's deck true, it as does. opposed to expensive. Yeah. So utilize those different um, search features, search parameters to help get a new group of cards that maybe you haven't seen before and help save you some money. So hopefully these tips help. We know Commander can be expensive, um, but we've found ways to help get the price down for us. Hopefully they work for you. Try to implement them. Let us know in the comments if they work for you. Yeah, or if you have any other ideas on how to play Commander on a budget, let us know. Please so. do. Anyway, thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoy what we're doing or don't enjoy it, I don't care. Give us a like and subscribe. We'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, praise Asmore. Bon, bon appétit. appétit.